Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video we will know about the foundation in construction, purpose of foundation and type of foundation. What is the foundation? Foundation is the lowest portion of a structure which transfers the load into the supporting soil. In the language of civil engineers, the term foundation denotes structure at founding level. The foundation or substructure is the lowermost portion of the building or any other structure, which is used to transfer different types of loads acting on it, to the subsoil below, on which it rests. Between all the other construction elements, the foundation is the most important one, it determines the structural stability of the building, and the number of years the building can serve its purpose effectively. What is the purpose of foundation? Foundations are provided for all load carrying structure for following purposes. 1. Foundation are the main reason behind the stability of any structure. The stronger is the foundation, more stable is the structure. 2. The proper design and construction of foundations provide a proper surface for the development of the substructure in a proper level and over a firm bed. 3. Specially designed foundation helps in avoiding the lateral movements of the supporting material. 4. A proper foundation distributes load onto the surface of the bed uniformly. This uniform transfer helps in avoiding unequal settlement of the building. Differential settlement is an undesirable building effect. 5. The foundation serves the purpose of completely distributing the load from the structure over a large base area and then to the soil underneath. This load transferred to the soil should be within the allowable bearing capacity of the soil. Functions of Foundation in Construction Based on the purposes of foundation in construction, the main functions of the foundation can be enlisted as below. 1. Provide overall lateral stability for the structure. 2. Foundation serve the function of providing a level surface for the construction of substructure. 3. Load distribution is carried out evenly. 4. The load intensity is reduced to be within the safe bearing capacity of the soil. 5. The soil movement effect is resisted and prevented. 6. Scouring and the undermining issues are solved by the construction of foundation. Types of foundation In general, all foundations are divided into two categories, shallow and deep foundations. The terms shallow and deep foundation refer to the depth of the soil at which it is placed. Generally, if the width of the foundation is greater than the depth, it is labeled as the shallow foundation. If the width is smaller than the depth of the foundation it is called as deep foundation. Type of foundation 1. Shallow foundation 2. Deep foundation Types of shallow foundation are 1. Isolated spread footing 2. Wall footing 3. Combined footing. 4. Cantilever or strap footing. 5. Raft or mat foundation. Types of deep foundation are 1. Pile foundation. 2. Pier foundation. 3. Caisson foundation. Shallow Foundations The shallow foundation depth is low and it is economical, 
it is the most popular type of foundation for lightweight structures. Type of shallow foundation Isolated spread footing This is the most widely recognized and most straightforward shallow foundation type, as this is the most economical type. They are typically utilized for shallow establishments to convey and spread concentrated burdens caused, for instance, by pillars or columns. They are generally used for ordinary buildings, typically up to five stories. For the non-reinforced footing, however, the stature of the footing has to be more prominent to give the vital spreading of the load. They should possibly be utilized when it is sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that no differing settlements will happen under the whole structure. Spread footings are inadmissible for the orientation of large loads. The size of the footing can be roughly calculated by dividing the total load at the column base by the allowable bearing capacity of the soil. Wall footing or strip footing Wall footing or strip footing, wall footing is also known as continuous footing. This type is used to distribute loads of structural or non-structural load-bearing walls to the ground in such a way that the load-bearing limit of the soil isn't outperformed and it runs along the direction of the wall. The width of the wall foundation is usually two to three times the width of the wall. The wall footing is a continuous slab strip along the length of the wall. Stone, brick, reinforced concrete, etc. are used for the construction of wall foundations. Combined footing The combined footing is very similar to the isolated footing. When the columns of the structure are carefully placed, or the bearing capacity of the soil is low and their footing overlap each other, combined footing is provided. It is fundamentally a blend of different footings, which uses the properties of various balances in a single footing dependent on the necessity of the structure. The foundations which are made common to more than one column are called combined footings. There are different types of combined footing, including slab type, slab and beam type, rectangular, raft, and strap beam type. They may be square, T-shaped, or trapezoidal. The main objective is the uniform distribution of loads under the entire area of footing, for this is necessary to coincide with the center of gravity of the footing area with the center of gravity of the total loads. Strap footing When an edge footing cannot extend beyond the property line, it is combined with other internal footings using a strap beam, it is called strap footing. Strap footings are similar to combined footings. Reasons for considering or choosing strap footing are identical to the combined one. Raft or Mat Foundation A mat foundation is a joint notch that covers the entire area under a structure, it supports all the walls and columns, it is also known as the fleet foundation. Raft or mat foundations are used where other shallow or pile foundations are not suitable. It is also recommended in situations where the bearing capacity of the soil is inadequate, the load of the structure is to be distributed over a large area or structure is subjected continuously to shocks or jerks. Raft foundation consists of a reinforced concrete slab or T-beam slab placed over the entire area of the structure. In this type, the whole basement floor slab acts as the foundation. The total load of the structure is spread evenly over the entire area of the structure. This is called raft because, in this case, the building seems like a vessel that floats on a sea of soil.
Pile Foundation Pile is a common type of deep foundation. They are used to reduce cost, and when as per soil condition considerations, it is desirable to transmit loads to soil strata which are beyond the reach of shallow foundations. Types of Pile Foundation 1. Based on function or use. 2. Based on materials and construction method. Type of based on function or use pile foundation. 1. Sheet piles. 2. Load bearing piles. 3. End bearing piles. 4. Friction piles. 5. Soil compactor piles. Type of based on materials and construction method pile foundation. 1. Timber piles. 2. Concrete piles. 3. Steel piles. 4. Composite piles. Sheet piles. This type of pile is mostly used to provide lateral support. Usually, they resist lateral pressure from loose soil, the flow of water, etc. They are usually used to serve the following purpose. 1. Construction of retaining walls. 2. Protection from river bank erosion. 3. Retain the loose soil around foundation trenches. 4. For isolation of foundation from adjacent soils. 5. For confinement of soil and thus increase the bearing capacity of the soil. Load bearing piles and end bearing piles. Load bearing piles. This type of pile foundation is mainly used to transfer the vertical loads from the structure to the soil. These foundations transmit loads through the soil with poor supporting property onto a layer which is capable of bearing the load. And bearing piles, in this type of pile, the loads pass through the lower tip of the pile. The bottom end of the pile rests on a strong layer of soil or rock. Usually, the pile rests at a transition layer of a weak and strong slayer. As a result, the pile acts as a column and safely transfers the load to the strong layer. Friction Piles and Soil Compactor Piles Friction Piles Friction pile transfers the load from the structure to the soil by the frictional force, between the surface of the pile and the soil surrounding the pile such as stiff clay, sandy soil, etc. Soil compactor piles, sometimes piles are driven at placed closed intervals to increase the bearing capacity of soil by compacting. Based on materials and construction method, Primarily piles can be classified into two parts. Displacement piles and non-displacement or replacement piles. Piles which causes the soil to be displaced vertically and radially as they are driven to the ground is known as displacement piles. In case of replacement piles, the ground is bored and the soil is removed and then the resulting hole is either filled with concrete or a precast concrete pile is inserted. On the basis of materials of pile construction and their installation process load bearing piles can be classified as follows. Timber piles, timber piles are placed under the water level. They last for approximately about 30 years. They can be rectangular or circular in shape. Concrete piles, steel piles, and composite piles. 
Concrete Piles The precast concrete pile is cast in pile bed in the horizontal form if they are rectangular in shape and two type. Steel Piles Steel piles may be of I section or hollow pipe. They are filled with concrete. The size may vary from 10 inches to 24 inches in diameter and thickness is usually 3 fourths inches. Because of the small sectional area, the piles are easy to drive. They are mostly used as end bearing piles. Composite piles Composite piles are those piles of two different materials are driven one over the other, so as to enable them to act together to perform the function of a single pile. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe my YouTube channel.